It's 1993 and the Chicago Bulls are back in the NBA Finals. In 93, the Bulls and championship games were no strangers to each other, but this time it was different. This is their third NBA Finals in three years, and they've already won two in a row, so it's a potential three-peat, something that hadn't been seen around the league since the Boston Celtics did it in 1961. We all know how it went down though. Michael Jordan and the Bulls willed their way to the Bulls' first ever three-peat in 1993. Three championship victories in a row, man. A historic moment that appropriately calls for a historic piece of footwear, the Air Jordan 8. The task of following up the Jordan 7 was of course assigned to the brilliant and charismatic Nike designer, Tinker Hatfield. The Air Jordan 8 was a huge departure from the African motif inspired Air Jordan 7. This time around, the Jordan 8 was filled with all kinds of quirky features. One of the more unique design features on the Jordan 8 was the addition of a double strap down system. Designed for elite lockdown support, two straps cross over each other like an X and lock down with flaps on the heel, drawing everything in like a straight jacket. This was classic Tinker Hatfield design. In fact, the year prior, Tinker Hatfield designed the 1992 Nike Air Raid Silhouette, a shoe made to withstand the rigors of outdoor basketball that also featured a crisscross strap support system. The Nike Air Raid 2 that released the following year is so alarmingly similar in appearance to the Jordan 8 that Jordan brand has since released an Air Jordan 8 Tinker Air Raid colorway inspired by the OG Air Raid 2 colorway. As for the cushioning setup, the Air Jordan 8 featured an air unit in the forefoot and the heel, staying pretty consistent with other Jordan models up until this point. The supportive upper of the shoe did come with the price though. The shoe was notably very warm and bulky. Thick padding, straps, no mesh, all natural materials like suede and leather, the shoe was just heavy. Some people even speculate that Michael Jordan's on and off battle with athlete's foot during that season was because of the Jordan 8. You guys ever had athlete's foot before? It sucks, I used to get it all the time when I was a skater. If you've had athlete's foot, subscribe to this channel. For me, the most iconic design detail is the Chanel Tongue Jumpman emblem. It has a carpet-like quality that I really like, and I'm not sure what's more 90s, the mud guards on the side of the shoe or this logo. As for the marketing for the shoe, the Air Jordan 8 had one of the wackiest commercials for a sneaker ever, and was kind of a preview of what we would see years later with Michael Jordan and Space Jam. Across the universe, people are asking, what fiend would steal Air Jordans? Oh goody, more Air Jordans for me. Pebble Beach. This is no way for a pamper superstar to travel. What the? Shoes. <gasps> and they're all mine. Give me those Air Jordans. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, no. Take these or else. The Air Jordan 8 released in 1993 in three original colorways. The Bugs Bunny, a white leather base pair with red and gray accents. The Playoffs, which had a black Durabuck upper with red and white accents. Or as some of you call them, the Air Jordan 8 breads. And then there's probably the most desirable OG colorway of the eight, the Aqua. Personally, my favorite. Similar build to the playoffs, but this time featuring purple and teal, a pretty popular color scheme for the 90s. Michael Jordan would wear these in the 1993 All-Star Game, where he scored 18 points and five assists right after listening to Boyz II Men perform the national anthem. For the Fun fact, the Air Jordan 8 Aquas are forever embedded into the minds of people who watch the 90s sitcom Roseanne, thanks to when Roseanne's son in the show, DJ Connors, puts up his fresh Air Jordan 8 Aquas on the table during an episode. In 2003, Jordan Brand released a low version of the Jordan 8, which is just, I don't know, it's tough for me to love these, but I guess the lower cut kind of gives it a modern feel. What do you think? Leave it in the comments below. The Jordan 8 doesn't really get a whole lot of love from Jordan brand nowadays, but there are a few solid non-OG colorways, like the Peapods and the Chromes. I will say this though, the Jordan 8 had some fire player exclusives. The green and black Ray Allen Boston Celtics is so dope with the Sugar Ray spelled out on the ankle collar. Another one of my favorites is the Q Rich BE, which boasted a fire New York Knicks theme. Josh and Juwan Howard, Chris Paul, and even Kobe Bryant would all don their own PEs of this underappreciated silhouette. Even Toronto Raptors superfan and hip-hop icon Drake 
had some fire OVO Jordan 8s made for him. A luxurious take on the simple black and white colorway his OVO collabs are famous for. I'd say the most recent moment for the Jordan 8 was the pair the brand made for the Washington Wizards' Rui Hachimura. This sneaker is inspired by Rui's Japanese heritage and his time on the Japanese Olympic basketball team. It's a dope sneaker for sure and I saw a lot of people in our Facebook group posting photos of it and it looks fire, I gotta admit. As the 1993 NBA regular season came to an end, Charles Barkley of the Phoenix Suns would win most valuable player for the regular season. And with the Suns facing the Bulls in the NBA Finals, Michael Jordan made it a point to show the world who the real MVP was. The Bulls won their third straight championship and shocked the world. Shortly after, on October 6, 1993, Michael Jordan held a press conference and in front of the world told everybody he was retiring from the game. It's crazy when you think about it, like the last time we would have saw Michael Jordan on the court with some Jordans on, he would have had the Air Jordan 8, that's where it would have ended. And although the 8 didn't have any iconic Jordan moments, no crazy dunks or memorable game winning buzzer beaters, it was the shoe that capped off the Bulls first 3 P, which is a huge deal in itself. But hey, a lot of you guys think you're subscribed to the channel but you're not. You're seeing it and you're recommended but you're not subscribed so go ahead and just hit that subscribe button for me. It would really help us out. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to leave you with the playlist of all the Air Jordan history videos we've ever done. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for you so you can learn more about the history of Air Jordan, which is fascinating. We've done a ton of videos. Um, go ahead and click on that. It'll take you over to those videos. And I appreciate you getting to the end of the video. Peace for now. And I'll see you in those videos.